Hello everybody, I'm John Gauthier. You're here with Gopher Industrial. We're here to talk to a special guest again, as usual, the way we've been every week, but let me tell you something. Uh, this guy has uh, taken back the mound, I think is what we <laughs> use, but uh, Carl, we got something here between us. I think oh, we just man. fished the Sabine Tournament. You want to tell us a little bit about what's standing here? Well, you know, the, the cold chills, just, just thinking about it. <laughs> it. It has been an incredible, incredible week. I mean, one that I couldn't have rode any better i certainly couldn't have dreamed it any better it's it's been a phenomenal week and you know to to have a victory especially in your hometown with all your family and your support group uh the home office of gopher industrial my title sponsor uh you know i, I struggle for words right now i mean i'm tickled to death <laughs> over what has happened well, I know it's been you know a long road, you know, back. I guess coming back and, and to say that you came back with a vengeance would be kind of an understatement. Now, and you come back, you uh, shook off some early, early in the early practice, kind of found out some news about some water being done, and you overcame all that. You couldn't fish some particular place. You found some fish, but you overcame that. Right. Uh, found some new water, some new fish, and uh, and put together. I, I have to say, a pretty good game plan, apparently. <laughs> uh, but I know a lot of it, you know, due to you know sponsors stuff, your skill sets that you have. But sponsors, you know, you, you know the Ranger boat and the Avenue Motor. Tell us a bit where oh, we were well. going. Well, you know, I was fishing the marsh, um, and the, the marsh can be tricky. I mean, there is, uh, for one, you're not dealing with a whole lot of water. Yeah. A lot of water, but not a lot of water <laughs> vertically. Um, you know, so I was running through some really shallow stuff, through some shallow grass, and uh, it, it got really, you know, to the point where you'd get a little bit scary. Without Ranger, without Evan Rood, it would have never been possible. Man, and I just tell you, I, I've thought about it and I've thought about it. I mean, I if I would have once had to slow down and had to stop, I'd have been stuck. I wouldn't have made it into way in or I wouldn't have made it to where I was fishing. So, man, I tell you what, running the best equipment out there is just, it means everything to me, John. And I, you know, and, and it's one of those things that I think about a lot because I, I've, I know what could have happened, but yeah. I'm so confident in, in my equipment. Well, I tell you what, and speaking of equipment, you know, I know that, uh, you know, that everything Bass Pro Shops, right? And so oh. look, tell us a little bit about what you were using as far as rod, reel, some of your tackle that you're using, because I think you had a couple of key baits that you used all week. I did, and I did. And I, and I have to say, you know, Bass Pro Shops, thank you. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's where I get all my tackle. I use my rods, my reels, my line, my hooks, my everything. Uh, one stop and, shopping. One stop shopping. And, and, and I tell you, I've, I've been to Bass Pro Shop probably, I don't know, I just got back from Little Rock. I went to Bass Pro Shops <laughs> there. I've been to about everyone in the country. But, you know, I, I did. I'm using the Carbon Light, the Johnny Morris rods, um, you know, for both throwing my frog. I caught my fish on a Zoom Super Fluke and a in a Bass Pro Shop floating frog, and those were two key products that I that I you know were essential to to me catching them. And then of course the rods and reels, and I um, uh, I was using the XPS line, yeah. 17 pound. Uh, probably the key bait that I threw throughout the week was a Zoom Super Fluke, and I had noticed the first day that I was in the area that there were a lot of bluegill. You know, we were fishing real shallow grass. I'd see a lot of bluegill. I actually had a couple of fish that, you know, uh, dropped a, a bluegill in my boat after yeah. I caught them. And so it, it just kind of sent on that, you know, maybe I need to duplicate that a little bit. So I threw a Zoom Super Fluke. I was throwing a um, uh, Bass Pro Shops uh, EWG offset hook, um, extra wide gap. I, I worked at Texas Rig. Um, skin hooked it in the back and that was my ticket that was my key bait throughout one of the neat things that i did throughout the week john is i put a a swivel yeah i think we call that a little one of the tricks of the trade well, that we don't really talk a about trick maybe maybe i shouldn't <laughs> indulge but i'm i'm i tell you what it was a real key and and for two reasons um a couple of reasons one is the swivel it, it, I was having to make long casts. So I'm fishing in a foot, foot and a half of water. So, you know, I'm having to make casts and not spook those fish. Mm -hmm. So I, I was able to do that and it would not twist my line. You know, after a while, an hour or two, a lot of times, you know, you're, you, you, these things spinning and your line's twisting. So it kept that from happening. But I think the main thing was is that the swivel actually helped weigh the bait down. So, you know, a lot of the fish, I know on the second day on Friday, I caught two four pounders 
and those two four pounders came on the initial fall and I caught them on back to back cast and I was truly convinced at that point that this little bitty swivel made a tremendous bit difference so and then what I do is is once the once the sun came out I, I really was look at my clock and when it turned 12 noon you know um, that's when I would go with the with the floating frog and I, I actually threw this bait um, on you know around lily pads mm -hmm. it was a bait that I didn't get as many bites on you know but when I did it typically was one of the better fish and I mean on the Sabine, you know, you catch a two and a half, three pounder. It's a, it's a good one, and, That's right. and I managed on the last day to catch a four pounder on this bait, and uh, you know, it just it made it made a huge difference in the tournament. So. Well, you know, and I think that's the, the thing about it. We all knew going into this kind of a tournament that you were going to be that the weights were going to be close. You know, and whoever could get that one key bite every day was the ones that were going to be in the top twelve. And I think that's what we saw is that every day the the guys that were at the top had a good fish. You know, in their bag, a three or four pounder, three or four pounder, and that's a big fish on our river system here. You know, but they were. But tell us, I mean, I know you caught a lot of fish. How many fish do you think you caught a day? You know, I, it's it's unbelievable, and I thought about that a lot. <laughs> I, my hands to tell you, I caught thousands, but um, I honestly, truly believe I've caught between two hundred and fifty, three hundred fish in three days, and I, that's not an exaggeration. I I was just catching so many, and and that that. That in itself took a lot of, it gave me a little confidence, but it can also wear you down to the point to where, you know, after you've caught 30 of these 11, 12 inchers, yeah. that, man, I'm just going to sit here and catch these little ones all day, and, and patience played a big part. I had to stick it out, stick it out, just keep catching the little ones, play the percentages, <laughs> eventually... That mama's going to be down there, and she's going to bite, and and that's exactly what happened. I, I, I over time, yeah. uh, I managed to um, to to catch a couple of those key bites, and and some of those in betweeners that that certainly made a difference here. Yeah, well, I tell you what, Carl, there's no doubt. I mean, anybody, if you have a chance to watch the weigh-in, if you haven't seen the weigh-in, you'll see that Carl had an abundance of support <laughs> here. People were pulling for you. Uh, I know from uh, from down here locally all the way up into the Bass headquarters. You know you've you've definitely made your your name and your, yourself known throughout the years, and a lot of people are pulling for you. And that kind of leads me to my next thing because this is a really big ticket right here. Uh, it's a really big ticket. It's a ticket to the classic, which is don't make me cry. I'm gonna tell you, I, I'm gonna bring him <laughs> tears right here. It's always fun you can get a grown man in tears on TV. But but yeah, it's a it's a great thing, and and uh, so I know you're excited. So so tell us about that because I know there's a whole lot of us now that are steadily making reservations to yeah. go. So it, tell me know, what you got with this. Well, I, I tell you what, you know you know when you're young and you're <laughs> seven, eight, nine years old. You, you remember one little thing. It may be your family taking you to Disney. It may be, you know, taking a ski trip as a young kid or, or whatever it may be. Well, one of the things that I remember uh, real clear is I was approximately, you know, eight or nine years old, and, and we would go to Toledo Bend, you know, at least a couple of times a, a month, and my dad loved to fish. And, and I remember at eight years old, well, I'll tell you what, I remember looking my dad in the eye and I said, Daddy, I'm fishing the classic one day. <laughs> and I just remember saying that. And I, I guess that was one of the things that, you know, was so emotional when I did find out that I won this tournament is I'm going to the Bassmasters Classic. And, I mean, I can honestly say it was my childhood dream. It was something I dreamed about for all these years. It is the Super Bowl. I've been to about four classics on the spectator side and watching, and I've had fun every every time I went. Yeah. Matter of fact, me and you sat in the stands before, yeah, and we get the cold chills and everything else. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like <laughs> being there and participating and fishing it. And uh, you know, lo and behold, if everything goes right and we catch them at that one, which I'm going to give it everything I got, um, it just I don't know. It's beyond storybook. I'm I'm excited, John. Well, that's good, and I tell you, we are too. And, and uh, I tell you what, you know, it's been a great time having Carl here again. You know, and, and giving us a few techniques on what he did, and no doubt support the sponsors. You know, go for Industrial Ranger, Evan Root, all the guys that uh, that support this business and, and support us being able to do this. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next tournament, right. Carl. It's coming up in a couple of months. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, I'd like to say real quick, I, I thank everybody out there. I mean, everybody that I've met 
you know, from the Carolinas to Tennessee to Oklahoma to Arkansas and uh, to especially right here in Orange, Texas for all the support and the phone calls. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's been a, a dream come true, and I, I thank each and every one of you. All right, well, Carl, thank you, you and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.